mangrove forests, the last line of defense against climate change in Saudi Arabia, have lost up to 55% of their area. But instead of planting trees, they're releasing crabs to heal these dying forests. What's the secret? It's not billion-dollar technology. This project is almost free. Keep reading because you're about to discover how Saudi Arabia quietly pulled off a global conservation miracle. As you know, Saudi Arabia has long been a symbol of black gold. But those massive oil fields sit in one of the driest belts on Earth. Here, the desert keeps spreading temperatures easily soar past 113 degrees Fahrenheit, and average rainfall is even lower than in many parts of the Sahara. That's why the stretch of mangrove forests running along 0.6 miles of the Red Sea and the Persian Gulf has become the last green shield balancing nature and human life. These mangroves block waves, hold the soil filter, salty water, and absorb excess nutrients helping prevent algae blooms that once wiped out coral reefs. Beneath their roots, they offer shelter for juvenile fish and shrimp boosting coastal seafood yields by 30 to 50% compared to sandy shallows. Most importantly, every acre of mangroves stores two to four times more carbon than tropical forests, making them a key pillar of the Saudi Green Initiative. But since the 1950s, over 55% of these forests have disappeared due to urbanization, industrialization, and infrastructure that blocks natural water flow. The 1991 Gulf War oil spill destroyed hundreds of acres. On top of that, industrial wastewater and heavy metals suffocated the roots. With salt levels climbing above 4%, the trees had to burn more energy just to survive stunting their growth and reducing carbon absorption. Saudis once tried replanting dead mangroves, but failed. Then researchers at King Abdullah University of Science and Technology KAUST stepped in. After many experiments, they realized the problem wasn't a lack of seedlings. The soil was exhausted. Root microbes had vanished and saplings couldn't survive. The solution had to start beneath the mud, so they introduced fiddler crabs, tiny creatures that click dig and scuttle through the mud. Fiddler crabs are native to healthy mangroves and perfectly adapted to the Red Sea's harsh conditions. The team carefully selected medium-sized active crabs, catching them by hand, to reduce stress and place them in special moist oxygenated boxes before release. With their habit of digging 8 to 12 inch deep burrows, fiddler crabs constantly churn the mud, bringing oxygen down into the soil, a natural process called bioturbation. To test this, the Saudis designed a careful field experiment. They chose mud flats with similar sediment and tidal heights, spaced at least 33 feet apart to avoid overlap. They divided the area into 10.8 square foot plots, randomly assigning enriched and control plots with at least five repeats each. Half the plots were fenced to keep in 100 to 120 crabs, three times the natural density, while control plots had about 30 crabs. Before releasing the crabs, the team sampled the soil to measure pH salinity redox potential and sediment oxygen demand. They installed sensors to record temperature salinity and water level every 30 minutes, set up leaf litter traps and root ingrowth bags to track root growth, and used time-lapse cameras and fluorescent paint to estimate crab movement. At the same time, soil samples were taken regularly at different depths to analyze bacterial diversity using 16S rRNA technology and to measure pH ions and carbon nitrogen and phosphorus ratios. All data was stored for comparison, paving the way for large-scale mangrove restoration. And with so many positive signals just six months later, the results stunned both the research team and the international community. In the enriched plots with fiddler crabs, soil salinity dropped by an average of 12% and up to 15% in some spots, while pH rose from 6.1 to 6.8, bringing the slightly acidic soil close to neutral, a game changer for mangrove root survival. The once nearly vanished microbial community exploded, bacterial density rose over 40%, and iron capturing bacteria doubled helping dissolve more iron and directly boosting photosynthesis and new shoots. 
the crabs kept digging hundreds of mini excavators, quietly creating oxygen channels in the mud. Sensors placed six inches deep showed soil oxygen levels up 35% versus control plots, moisture held steady as tides receded, and soil temperature swings dropped by nearly five degrees Fahrenheit crucial for young trees battling the Red Sea's extreme heat. In just one year, the ecosystem around the test plots changed dramatically Insect and invertebrate numbers jumped over 40%, providing rich food for juvenile fish and shrimp. Independent surveys found fish fry density 1.5 times higher in crab-rich areas than in controls a direct sign of the chain reaction these tiny creatures set off. In this environment, the Red Sea's two main mangrove species thrive. Avicennia marina sends up thousands of breathing roots, like air pipes, anchoring soil, and feeding bacteria and plankton. Meanwhile, Rhizophora mucronata's dense prop roots form a natural wave barrier, reducing coastal erosion. And at the heart of it all, fiddler crabs are the missing link they accidentally drag propagules, seedlings dropped from mother trees into their humid burrows. These burrows with loose soil, stable moisture, and natural shade become mini incubators where propagules are far more likely to take root than on bare mud. Thanks to this, patches of degraded forest are sprouting new shoots, signaling a new cycle of recovery. Restoring each acre of mangroves isn't just an ecological win, it brings real economic benefits. These forests supply 40 to 50% of local shrimp and fish equal to 55 to 66 million pounds of seafood per year, supporting thousands of fishing families in Jazantabuk and Mecca. At the same time, the restored forests have become top ecotourism spots. Kea routes of two to three miles and bird watching for flamingos and brown pelicans attract over 20,000 visitors a year, generating more than $10 million in revenue creating hundreds of coastal jobs and raising conservation awareness. More importantly, this success marks a strategic shift for Saudi Arabia from oil nation to green nation. With the Saudi Green Initiative, the kingdom aims to expand mangroves to over 148,000 acres by 2030, cutting CO2 emissions and boosting climate resilience. Researchers at KAUST have seen great results showing crabs are a valuable addition for Saudi Arabia's degraded mangroves. But the next phase is already planned. Next, they'll plant young mangroves in the enriched crab dug plots, then closely track rooting and survival rates through multiple tidal seasons to see if the soil now has enough nutrients, oxygen, and moisture for new forests to thrive. If successful, this model could be scaled up across thousands of acres of salt-damaged land along the Red Sea. Saudi scientists hope large-scale adoption will restore another 15,000 to 20,000 acres of forest over the next decade. Looking further ahead, this experience could be shared with other countries along the Gulf and North Africa with similar coastal conditions. It's also worth noting that Saudi Arabia isn't relying on crabs alone to restore mangroves. The country is taking a multi-pronged approach. The National Center for Vegetation Cover and Combating Desertification is the backbone of these efforts. In just three years, from 2021 to mid-2024, they've planted over 13 million mangroves along the Red Sea and Persian Gulf. With detailed plans, 5.5 million in Jazan, 2.4 million in Mecca, 2 million in Medina, 1.5 million in Tabuk, 1 million in Asir, and 0.5 million in the east. Every site is fenced for protection and monitored quarterly for survival rates avoiding the plant and abandoned problems seen in many environmental projects. Next, the Vegetation Development Fund stands out by running evidence-based programs. In March 2025 alone, they planted 2.4 million trees in five reserves and partnered with the Saudi National Bank to plant 100,000 in Jubal and 21,000 in the east, targeting 10 million trees by 2027. Precision in each planting area and scientific management ensure lasting results. 
we can't overlook Saudi Aramco's role, the oil giant is actually leading the greening effort. Since 1993, Aramco has quietly offset extraction impacts by planting forests. The Rahima Ecological Park project launched in 2020 has planted over 43 million trees across 25 square miles with nurseries, field labs, and observation towers. Each tree is estimated to absorb 1.5 tons of carbon dioxide over 60 years, locking away tens of millions of tons in the future. Equally ambitious Red Sea Global brings a tourism and conservation angle. Since July 2023, they've run a record-scale nursery aiming to grow 50 million trees by 2030. Each tree is raised for about eight months, reaching 31 inches before being planted in coastal parks with a goal of 30% net conservation benefit by 2040 restoring ecosystems while boosting high-end ecotourism. Finally, the carbon offset project on Abu Ali Island at the Persian Gulf's mouth shows the power of community. Since October 2022, over 494 acres of forest have been restored using mud flat and anti-erosion barriers. What's special? The petrochemical company Pro Rabbi mobilized employees and their families to plant 10,000 trees in the first phase, greening over 753,000 square feet of coastline and turning restoration into a social movement. Have you ever wondered if a sun-baked nation like Saudi Arabia can revive its mangroves? What other ways can the world wake up nature? In the UAE, technology is the main weapon Adnox drones can sow over 2,000 seeds in just eight minutes, speeding them toward their goal of 10 million mangroves by 2030. Over 200,000 seeds in the first batch are being monitored by community volunteers for three years. Meanwhile, Ecuador chose a natural creative solution. The Aqua Forest Project built a brand new 123-acre island from dredged mud at the Guayas River mouth. Here, over 12,000 mangroves were planted with an 85% survival rate in just the first year. A system of tidal channels, coconut log, and geotextile reinforced banks helps the island absorb over 11,000 tons of carbon dioxide in 20 years, revive fisheries, and attract tourists and scientists. Compared to Saudi Arabia's Fiddler Crab Project and tree planting programs that rely on nature and public-private partnership, the UAE shows the clear advantage of tech-driven acceleration, while Ecuador proves the value of community-based ecological design. But the common thread is this, there's no single formula for mangrove restoration. Every country can choose its own path, but the lesson for the world is clear. Rely on scientific evidence, mobilize communities, combine technology and nature, and most importantly, act as soon as possible, because every year of delay means thousands of acres of forest lost forever. What do you think of these solutions between seed sowing drones, artificial islands, or these tiny crab engineers, which approach impresses you most. Share your thoughts in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more inspiring green recovery stories from around the globe.